Okay. So good afternoon, all of you. I'd like to welcome, uh, heartily welcome all of you to this pro final project presentation. And uh, VBOX had conducted 10 amazing uh, sessions, online innovation program sessions to the kids. And the students have, based on those sessions, the students have come up with uh, their own new and innovative ideas that they will be presenting in front of us. So uh, without any further ado, I'm asking for your patience and your appreciation to our students. So let's begin. So first of all, we will start with Gauri. So yes, Gauri. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hi. Hi, my name is Gauri. I'm studying in seventh grade in St. Thomas Residential School. I'm excited to share my project with you guys. So let's go through it. Uh, ma'am, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes, it's visible. Can you just uh, put it in the... Oh, uh, well, uh, I can't see any options, ma'am. No issues. You can begin with your uh, presentation. Okay, okay. ma'am. Uh, so yeah, hi, my name is Gauri. I'm studying in seventh grade. Today, I'm going to present my idea with you guys. My project's name is Super Sensor, which is also called as CO2 Sensor, Carbon Dioxide Sensor. My project is a very, very helpful device for people. Even my project can save a person's or a pet's life. It has lots of advantages and some disadvantages. It is basically used in cars. So why it is helpful? Why I chose this project? The super sensor is... Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So uh, the super sensor is used to measure the carbon dioxide level in the car. If kids or pets are trapped in a car, the sensor measures the CO2 level. I mean the carbon dioxide level. When we breathe out, the carbon dioxide come out from our nostrils, mouth and all. So... Uh, the carbon dioxide is full, uh, the car, the closed uh, area is full of carbon dioxide. So it measures the carbon dioxide. If the carbon dioxide level is high, then an alarm beeps for three minutes. So yeah, the alarm beeps for three minutes. Why means uh, if people are around the car, I mean around the area where the car is parked, the uh, people could uh, understand, okay, this particular person or a pet is trapped. So I want to help them. So uh, there is a fixed time, correctly, perfectly three minutes. So uh, they could help them. At the same time, the windows of the car automatically opens. Well, uh, these uh, sensor and this alarm and uh, win uh, door windows and all are connected to each other. So the uh, windows of the car automatically opens so that the carbon dioxide get rid of the window and oxygen and, and all supplies like air Sufficient air will come inside and we could breathe easily. This is done so that the one who is trapped inside a car will get enough air to breathe. The reason why I chose this project is because there are lots of accidents happening like this. Even people and pets are dying because of this reason. So I chose this project. Well, my brother gave this idea and then I started to work on it. I really thank my brother. So, what is the process of the super sensor? I just mentioned it right now. It measures the CO2 level. If the CO2 level is high, an alarm beeps for three minutes. At the same time, the windows of the car automatically opens. So, what is needed? What is needed for the uh, device or what is needed for this full project? Well, a CO2 measuring device is needed. An alarm is needed, which is connected to the device. And it should be also connected to the door window of the car so that the uh, windows will be automatically open and not only this we want many things like wire which connects these things together so i think i i um i just meant that these three is the main main things needed for this project what is the advantages and this and disadvantages of this project well the advantages are when the alarm beeps for three minutes, people around the area of the car can help the trapped ones. There will be no more accidents. It will happen. Like trapped in a car without oxygen will happen. The disadvantage is when alarm beeps for three minutes, the sound will be so loud that the trapped ones will have to adjust with the sound. Well, I will give you an example. Uh, uh, like pets like dogs, cats and all have a very good hearing sense. 
so uh, than human beings they have a very good hearing uh, sense if they hear a small sound they could easily understand where it came from but this will be a loud noise that people should help them right so the pets should have to adjust with and they'll feel very uncomfortable while this so that that is the disadvantage of this project well uh, that's all this is my project uh, full uh, so Thank you for your precious time that you spend with me. I really thank my our mentor, Miss Mahima, ma'am, who allowed me to share my project with you guys. And I really thank you all. Thank you. And any questions? Any questions? Uh, no, thank you so much, Gauri. Uh, that was a very good presentation from your side and a very innovative idea. Yes, uh, Mahadev has a question. So, yes, Mahadev. Oh, the, uh, Thank uh, you. Does the auto sensor exist in real life or it is yet to be created? Uh, sorry? Uh, Gauri, is uh, this uh, CO2 sensor uh, exists in real life right now or uh, it is yet to be created? I think it's uh, it's going to be created. I really don't know about that. Yeah, we can okay. work on that idea. Yes, very good. Girl. Yeah, we'll work on it. Thank you so much, Mahadev, for that question. So now we will move on with our uh, next student. So, Saitaru, yes, you can go. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, you are perfectly audible. Hello, guys. My name is Saitaru. I study in St. Thomas Residential School of Class 7A. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my topic, robotics. I'm going to be sharing with you my topic, Robot Chef. So, Light we'll show. be discussing today, moving on. So, we'll be discussing why we need a Robot Chef, how it works, the advantages, the difficulties, and the future scope. So, let's get on. So, why we need a Robot Chef? So, I made this in the form of a story. Five friends who have graduated from IIT, which is Indian Institute of Technology, started a new business. They worked very hard to succeed in their business. So automatically, they did not find time to prepare food. So they ordered food online, which is not unhealthy, which is unhealthy. Until one day, they thought of building a machine which prepares simple snacks like tea, coffee, etc. to get out of this unhealthiness. And they made a prototype and it was a huge success. Uh, this made them think to build a robot which could prepare all sorts of food, anything, uh, so that they can concentrate more on their work. So this is why we need a robot chef. We don't need to worry about food and unhealthiness. We just need to work. We can concentrate more on our work. So moving on. We'll be discussing how it works. So there will be robotic arms attached to a cabinet which contains wires and other electronics. So I got this picture. So these are the robotic arms. They are attached to a cabinet. So these cabinet will have the um, wires and other electronics. And there will be two robotic arms like these with five fingers. And there will, they will be made up of lightweight metals like aluminium and 3D printed parts with PLA. So why we need lightweight met metals is that uh, we need the servos to have enough power to make the hand move. So um, if it's lightweight, the servos could move more easier. So that's why I chose lightweight metals and 3D printed parts with PLA. So moving on, we'll be discussing how it works again. So it will have a touch screen for selecting various dishes. Uh, it will have a touch screen for selecting various dishes, a port for putting recipe chips. So uh, pen drives with recipe chips will be plugged. So pen drive with a recipe coded in it will be plugged in to a port so that it can access all those recipes. And those recipes will be showed on the touch screen. You can select one of those recipes. So there will be utensils uh, which can be used by both robots and humans. So why the last thing? Why we do we why do we need utensils which can be used by both robots and humans? First thing is that uh, if you want to make it by your hand and not by the robot, you could use it by yourself also now. 
So if you want to make it by yourself, not by the robot, you could just disable the robot and make it by yourself. Also, uh, for example, you need to make idli batter. The, so the so you on the mm, robot and it starts making in, idli batter. You put ingredients into the grinder and starts it. After some time, the batter will be ready. And for transferring it, we need to for the batter will, to be fully ready. We need to transfer it and keep it for one day. So for transferring, the robotic arms cannot use its own arm to take it. So it it'll, it may malfunction because of those uh, batter because it's a liquid. So it could use uh, another robotic arms next to it to transfer. So a robotic arm with a cup shown in this picture. So it will be with a cup and there will be joints so the robotic arm can move. That robotic arm will transfer the batter from the grinder to another container. So that's why we need utensils which can be used by both robots and humans. So moving on, it will have some wheels attached to the top of the arm which allows the arm to move around the kitchen. So if the robotic arm can't be stuck in one place, if it needs to take different ingredients, it needs to move around the kitchen and also different spoons and all those stuff. So to take those, it will need to move. So there will be wheels attached to the top, which will be attached to a cabinet, attached to, to the cabinet. And uh, this will help take different ingredients and the slots of the ingredients, which I mentioned. And these slots will be labeled by code and by signs. So if the robot wants to detect, you will be labeled by code. And if you want to detect, you can label those. So it will be labeled by code and by signs so that the computer can identify ingredients so that you and the computer can identify ingredients. There will be measuring spoons with the quantity of them labeled back of the spoon. So why do we need a measuring spoon? So if the robot needs to add a pinch, so we'll ha have a We'll have a spoon which has a mesh. We'll have a measuring spoon which labels pinch. So the robot can take a handful of salt and put it to the ingredient. But if we have measuring spoons, you can know which spoon to add, which the measurement of the ingredient adding. So each ingredient will, in the ingredient slots and the spoon will be labeled with numbers. I'll explain this with the picture in the coming slide. So each ingredient slots and the spoon will be labeled with numbers so that it will be easier to code. So it will be labeled with numbers and the places of the utensils and the spoons will be labeled with letters. So the ingredient slots, the spoons, the uh, utensils, they'll be labeled with letters. So I'll picture. So this is how the kitchen looks. And these are the parts I'll be going through them now. So these are the robotic arms. These are the cups so that if you want to put some liquids and serve it, you could put it. And these are plates. This is a plate holder with plates. This is the grinder. This is the robotic arm with cup we were talking about. The gas stuff for cooking. The water purifier. The water purifier. Most of the um, dishes we are making nowadays almost needs water. So it needs at least some water. So there's a water purifier, a chapati pan for making chapatis, a curry pan. If you want to make sambar, you can make sambar in the curry pan and ingredient slots. So these are the ingredient slots and the uh, mm, these are the ingredient slots. So these, these will be labeled with numbers. So there will be spoons right here. So that they will be also labeled with numbers so we could now they will, be, they will be labeled with numbers for example this is one and this is two and think that the ingredient slot is a it's labeled with a and this is one and two that means it's this is a one a two so this will make easier code which I, I mentioned in the previous slide this will make the process of coding more easier so moving on we'll be discussing the advantages of this invention. So the advantages are it helps people who are working hard in businesses, research and engineering. And like if you are in one of these 
it will help you a lot because if you are sitting 24 hours slash 7 in front of the computer and you want food you don't need to order it online you could you could make it you just need to tell the computer to make it and it will make it so it also helps bigger restaurant to make dishes more quicker and also more accurately with more taste so it will uh, help big big restaurants if they have more customers coming and going so you will have different dish chips if you have all the different dish chips, you could like make every dish in the world. So moving on, we'll be discussing the difficulties. So it could use a lot of electricity. So if, unless you're um, having a lot of money to spend on it, you can't uh, use, you can't buy this one. And it also, it ha it's a lot expensive. So it could use a lot of electricity, which means you have to spend a lot of money one robot will also money on one robot also for now it does not clean itself so you need to like spend 10 to 15 minutes cleaning after the robot makes some mess and the people on, who only have money can buy this robot and also um, pay the electricity charge so that's why uh, this is these are the difficulties so this could be used by uh, restaurants obviously but uh, single people have to spend a lot of money. So we'll be discussing the future scope of this invention. For now, we need recipe chips. Why I chose recipe chips is that um, when you code, you can't enter all the code into it. So you need like recipe chips, which can, if you like make different recipe chips, um, it would help the process of coding and also slow it down. You could enter your own dishes invented by you. For example, my ma mother makes a lot of dishes by herself. And uh, if you, if the recipe chips do not have those dishes and do not know the ingredients, you can't make those dishes. You need to make it by yourself. So that's one of the future scope. You could enter your own dishes into like the recipe chips and you may choose the set of ingredients in the recipe. So now you can choose the set of ingredients. Like if you're allergic to peanuts, so you could just remove peanuts and add a broccoli or something like that. So you could remove and add. The, so thank you for your kind patience in this listening. And I'm out for questions. Thank you. Um, Saitaran, I have a question. Yes. Yes, Gauri, please. Uh, okay, what is the covering used to bind its hand, the robot's hand? So, um, I don't understand. Can you please repeat? I mean, uh, you know, what kind of metal or what kind of material is used to cover so, the hand? Okay. So, uh, the metal is called aluminium. So, for covering, we'll be using aluminium. For yes. like mechanisms, we'll use PLA, which is polylactic acid. So, this can be 3D printed and it's also cheap. Okay, uh, won't the steel plates and the glass plates slip from its hand? Oh, what if it just keeps the plate on the... Okay, there will be any the grip instead of... Uh, oh, okay. okay. I, not, I don't know too much detail about this, but it will have robotic arms, which is like our arms with five fingers. It will similarly work like our, our, our arms also. Yeah, thank you so much, Saitarun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Saitarun, for that wonderful and innovative idea from your side. Uh, now, next, I will uh, ask Devisha to go forward and present your idea. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Devisha Agarwal, and today I will be presenting my idea for Travel App, which I have named Hermes, the Holiday Expert. Have you ever gone on a vacation and then experienced a lot of problems thinking about questions like, what all places should I see? Will I have time to see all of them? Where will I get the food of my choice? Well, recently I had a similar experience. Last month, I went to Thekkadi with my family. I was very excited for the trip because I was going out of my house after a long time. So I made a lot of plans. 
but as soon as we reached our destination all those plans were abandoned i learned a lesson from that trip that even though the internet may provide you with a lot of information most of it is not very useful while planning your trip these are some of the common problems people face while making their holiday plan no matter how much you search and how many detailed plans you make once you reach your destination you will not have time to take even a second glance at it even if you are visiting a place for the second time you will surely have missed some places during your first visit then many new questions arise if you search the net you get too much information too much information causes confusion confusion equals to stress and stress equals to your whole trip being spoiled the solution to all these problems is to have complete factual information available in a convenient way before one arrives at a new location these are some statistics regarding travel apps the tourism industry is growing rapidly most of the tourists use a smartphone to book their trip many people are open to new technologies but finding best destination based on your liking budget and time is still a nightmare making your own holiday plan is time consuming and all the information you get on the internet may overload your brain there are mainly four popular travel app sites accommodation booking apps such as airbnb zomato etc flight booking apps like hopper make my trip yatra.com transport apps the most popular of which are ola and uber and travel guides like triposo and touristify some apps i have one of these or maybe a combination of these but no apps have all of these so that's what i propose an app that has all these features hermes the holiday expert i have named this app after the greek god of roads and traveler hermes please take a look at the logo i have designed on the side it is made up of mainly three things the flying sandals that belong to hermes a map and compass and a plane that symbolizes traveling there are some essential features every app must have automation collaboration and security we live in a busy world where everyone wants things at the blink of an eye so all the features in our app must be automatic collaboration we will have to collaborate with a lot of existing technologies to develop the app security we must make sure that all our users personal information is kept secure there are some features that i would want in a travel app uh, that is pick up from my residence and after enjoying the whole trip to be dropped back to my residence no one wants to miss the landmark places of the site they are going to visit and we must make sure that we plan our trip based on our customers habits and interests of course no one wants a trip to be stressful we will we must make sure that we can provide the food according to the customer's taste even during sightseeing and the point i want to stress on is flexibility for example if you slip through your alarm or your flight is delayed you need not worry the live app will update the information and alter your plans to make your trip as enjoyable as possible these are some of the sample questions we will ask our users the place they are going to the total budget of their trip the age of the travelers uh, you must be wondering why i am asking for the age uh, according to the age we will give suggestions for activities like if we have babies with you we will not suggest tired some activities if there are old people they may want to visit some visit some religious places and if there are school kids they might be interested in museums or adventure parks then the type of food they want to eat on the trip their preferred mode of transportation the purpose of their trip is it a leisure trip a family trip or an adventure trip and any special activities they want to try these are some of the special features we will introduce in hermes like i mentioned before our app will cater to changes in sightseeing plans on the fly we will take direct information from local sources to make sure that it is authentic we will skip the middleman for budget purposes our app will encourage people to take interest in the culture and heritage of local areas and also improve the facilities in those areas 
we will also promote cottage industries each and every user will have a personalized view of fe view of features in the app our app also has some limitations natural phenomena cannot be predicted accurately our app will have to use high end coding skills to optimize the customer experience it takes time to gain trust of users as the tourism industry is ever changing we will have to update our app constantly this app is highly dependent on the satellite navigation system that are controlled by governments we will have to collaborate with many other applications to develop this Uh, this is the future scope of the app we will first start at small locations and then we can expand internationally uh based on the travel history of the users we will also suggest suggest future trips uh we will start more detailed advertising even for local shops our app will increase employment opportunities and our app will ha have to use professional skills for changing the plans on the fly This is a SWOT analysis: strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. The strength of this app is that it is very much required by the tourism industry, so it will gain fast popularity once it is introduced into the market. As the industry is evergreen, our app will never be outdated. Uh, the weakness is that uh, currently I do not have the capability nor the knowledge to develop this app. the opportunities is that the industry is ever growing and so we will have infinite opportunities waiting for us um as i mentioned before our app is very dependent on the satellite navigation system that is controlled by a government so if authorities change policies to make such services private our app may be jeopardized thank you for your patient listening hope you enjoyed this presentation any questions Devisha, can this app only be used in India, or can it be used in any countries? Um, first, we will start by only using this in India. But later, if this app gains popularity, we can also start expanding and uh, introducing this app into international countries. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Devisha. Uh, where do they get this information? Um, I didn't quite understand your question, Ryan. Can you repeat? Uh, where do the where does this app get the information from? Uh, yes, uh, Ryan. We will, as I mentioned before, we will try to uh, go to and go and research the places we are going to introduce in this app, and we will take the information from the people living there and then add this into our app. So, won't that take a very long time? You have to take give personal attention. Right. Yes, yes, Ryan. That will take time, but if I if this is carried out, I will be. I, it's surely going to be a very big hit in the in the market. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Devisha, for such a wonderful and innovative idea from your side, and very well done. Next, I'm gonna ask Ditan to uh, present your topic. Yes, Ditan, you you can go on. Hi everyone. My name is Didan. I am studying in seventh grade of the Saint Thomas Residential School. My project name is uh, LPG Gas Detect. Teacher, can you see? Yeah, I can see it. Just put it in the uh, slide show and you can start. Yeah. Uh, my contents are why I took this topic, why we need this, when will the alarm produce, process, components, advantages of this innovation, and disadvantages of this. Why I took this topic? So I have many deaths by gas leakage. Current, uh, so I took this topic. Why we need this? We need this because many people are dying due to LPG gas leakage. So if this idea becomes real, this innovation will be a remedy for people dying due to LPG gas leakage. The number of people will de decrease. Where will it place? The it will be placed near the gas stove. When will the alarm produce? The alarm will produce when the gas leakage is about twenty percent. It's the process. If there is gas leakage, the sensor in it can detect the smell produced by the leakage and produce an alarm. 
and there will be a valve which can which cut off the gas supply this is same thing sensor uh, when it sends the smell uh, it with some electronics uh, the hooter or buzzer will produce sound and at the same time the valve will turn off the, the cut off the gas supply the components uh, sensor which can sense the smell of gas leakage hooter or buzzer to produce sound valve which can turn off the gas stove advantages of this innovation it sometimes can may be very useful as they help us escape from very dangerous situations uh, and when small kids turn on the gas accidentally in the absence of adult supervision it will be very useful as uh, the valve will turn off cut off the gas supply uh, so be before any danger happens disadvantages of this innovation component damages or failures may affect the regular operation this means if one component becomes any damaged or uh, damaged uh, it will affect uh, the whole of the uh, uh, whole operation for example if the valve get damaged uh, uh, it will not of the gas supply so it will be dangerous and the second is it will be very expensive this is my project process okay thank you so much uh ditan for your amazing idea and presenting your project in uh, in front of us next i'm gonna ask nakshatra to go forward and uh, present your idea yes nakshatra Hi everyone, I'm Nakshatra, and it's my pleasure to share my project with you guys. So I hope let's start. I hope everyone can see, and I'm audible. I hope. Yes, you are perfect. You are. Okay. Um. So my content is artificial intelligence, and it's a robot for moving garbage. So let's see what is AI. As the slide says, artificial intelligence is some is the simulation of human intelligence processed by machines, especially computer systems. In simpler words, it's just a model of human beings which is done by computer systems. And my project. So my project is to help the workers at corporation because they keep our surroundings clean by sweeping, removing the garbage. So if I create this robot to help them, uh, it can stop spreading diseases like malaria, dengue, etc. from mosquitoes. And there might be other insects which also spread different diseases. So um, this is how I came up with my idea. I was like walking in the road and I saw a man who really worked hard to remove the heavy garbage sacks. And uh, he was very, really working hard because our people from our neighborhood have com complained about this issue. So I thought if I create this robot, it would be a real help for uh, workers. So components of my AI is power supply. The type of power supply which I am using is batteries because uh, it can be charged similar to laptops and mobile phones. If it goes under 20%, it can be charged and activators to activate the robot, electric motors and air muscles, uh, muscle wires and ultrasonic motor sensors because sensor is needed for sensing. And uh, the, how it works, it's, uh, it has a body structure to lift the heavy garbage and it has a muscle system which is the same reason. And a sensory system, uh, example, if we say something to the robot, like take this garbage sack and put it in the lorry, it should understand something that we are saying. So it should have a sensory system and a power source to activate the muscles. The power source is the battery and uh, a, ba a brain system to process the sensory information. Uh, if we are saying something similar to humans, we have brains to understand. So like that, the robot should also have a brain system to understand. And there are advantages and limitations. The advantages is it helps in human health. Uh, it will decrease the human, uh, you know, it will decrease the dis disease spreading. And uh, it does more faster than human beings. 
uh, and it will make a very fewer mistakes while doing the job. Uh, uh, it, it can lift the heavy garbage sack and it can uh, separate it into plastic and bio waste. And it's, uh, it is easy to understand for humans. It saves the time than uh, like, as I said, it does faster than the human being. So it saves the time and it has certain limitations too. It is expensive and it is restricted to their programming and it requires expertise to set this robot up. Uh, normal people can't set this robot up. It needs very expert on to set this robot up. And there are certain future scope for my AI. Maybe it could work without batteries in the future, some kind of uh, solar energy or something like that. And maybe it will be faster than now it is. And maybe it will have a speech recognition, so we don't have to repeat what we are saying all the time. Uh, if for example, take this garbage and put it in the lorry, we don't have to repeat it if it had speech recognition. And maybe it will be able to detect language. Someone who doesn't know English, they have to say something to the robot to do uh, something. So if doesn't they don't don't they don't know English, they, this robot could uh, detect the language in future. Uh, I hope everyone liked my project uh, about creating this, ro uh, creating this robot. And I think uh, everyone can innovate this idea too. And uh, artificial intelligence can be used in different fields like in hospitals uh, and uh, other fields too. Uh, thank you. Any questions? I hope uh, everyone liked my project. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Nakshatra, for uh, your wonderful idea and your project presentation today. Next, um, we will go with Anushka. Uh, hello guys, my name is Anushka. So today I'm going to present uh, my project named Asmo Robot. So let's start. So contents first, uh, brief history of the robot, then uh, how Asmo works today and its motion, senses and how it's charged and controlled and its advantages and disadvantages and conclusion. So uh, why I chose this topic is because people all around the world adore this robot and uh, because it is an uh, advanced humanoid robot and it helps and someday it will assist people in their daily lives. So it is created by the Honda Motor Company in 1986. Uh, it is, uh, its abbreviation is Advanced Step in Innovative Mobility. So first of all, it started off at over, it was six feet tall and it often fell down while walking. And uh, the company was getting frustrated with this project and they almost gave up hope. Then uh, in 1991, uh, the ASMO robot was steadily able to steadily walk. And it also had the ability to walk on an inclined plane. And by 1997, the robot was uh, reduced in size to four feet. So this feature enabled a robot to do activities that humans could do, such as sit at a computer, turn on a light switch, and turn door knobs. So how ASMO works today? Uh, in 2000, the robot was introduced to the world, and uh, the Honda Motor Company embedded an IC communication card. So this robot could uh, communicate with people in 2005. And its motion, just like our uh, how our toes work in human body, this robot has uh, soft projections on the feet, which act like toes. And it also has a hip, knee, foot joints, and other joints referred to as degrees of freedom. And it also has a speed sensor and gyroscope sensor in its body. And uh, its floor, floor surface sensors in the feet and ultrasonic sensors in the midsection of its body. It also has turning capabilities. Then it senses and uses stereoscopic vision and proprietary vision algorithm. It has a sense of touch and has ultrasonic sensors to detect uh, surrounding objects and IC communication cards to communicate and facial recognition capabilities. It's, uh, it can be controlled by a wireless controllers, PC uh, gestures and voice commands. It is powered by server motors and has certainly 34 server motors in its body. Uh, it is charged by a rechargeable 51.8 volts lithium ion battery. And this battery is stored in the backpack weighing 13 pounds. 
so uh, the uh, pros of this asimo robot are it can do tedious chores that take up a lot of time uh, help the elderly and disabled that uh, if somebody is blind uh, this robot can help them close the rod and all and it can perform certain tasks that are dangerous to humans in the productivity it can increase and it has a capability to sense the movements of numerous objects while capturing visual information by its camera eyes and the disadvantages of this robot are uh, people fear that robot will take over their job and uh, human activities they fear that robots will take over the world and uh, less personal communication and it costs a lot of money to build this robot and it also needs a very uh, very uh, costly power source and it has to be charged and it is not that fast and very small so my idea is that this asim robot is very a bit slower so i like to make it a bit faster using synchronous motors so these motors are uh, constant speed motors it operate in synchronism with ac line frequency and uh, we can uh, we are this motors are commonly used where precise constant speed is required so in conclusion this robot is a very amazing technological advancement but it could do better and this will allow people uh, to allocate their time in a more productive manner and it will also inspire young people who are interested in stem technology uh, mathematics and science to um, join this field and make robots more so uh, thank you any questions uh, how exactly would you make it faster Uh, yeah, we can make it faster by using synchronous motors. Like I told, that uh, they can uh, increase speed of a robot. Okay, so what are synchronous motors? Yeah, uh, they are uh, uh, motors that can increase speed. Like I told in the PPT. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much, Anushka, for uh, your presentation. Very well done. Next, we will go with Ryan. Uh, good afternoon, friends. My name is Ryan Smatthew, and today I am sharing a presentation on generation of electricity by exercising. So, uh, okay, as you can see the contents. Uh, this, as you can see, is a new way to produce electricity. while discouraging the laziness in people to exercise uh, it's not visible this is a simple concept yes hook up a generator to an exercising machine and bam free energy but it might be a bit harder when we try to actually implement it these problems will be covered later on i saw a video about hamster wheels producing electricity once and i wanted to see whether that was actually possible and it does as demonstrated in the next slide This is a substitution of a battery with a motor, which spins to generate electricity. This can be spun by various machines in the gym, like the elliptical trainer. This kind of motor that generates electricity is called a generator or a dynamo. Uh, click on the square, ma'am. It was not working actually. Sorry. Okay then. Next yeah, slide. Yeah, I can just see a uh, black. Hmm. <laughs> The jobs mentioned in this slide include an increased production of machines for needed for this concept, maintenance demands, etc. Turning this into an industry will be hard though due to efficiency concerns and labor force shortages. Many people are accustomed to letting machines do most of their work at their jobs, so it will be tough getting enough manpower to run these machines. Next slide. To do this, you will need a gym area, the exercising machines, and people to operate them. We've had the idea of innovation drilled into our heads by our dear mentors, so I think it will be easy for you all to imagine. Next slide. In the future, a lot of things will happen, like flying cars and a better way to convert our movements into electricity. That might be the, that might be the turning point for this idea. Thank you, Mahima, ma'am, for being my mentor through this entire three months. Thank to thanks to the audience for patient patiently listening to my presentation. Have a good day. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Ryan, for your uh, 
such innovative idea and thank you for presenting your uh, idea to us next i would okay. ask mahadev to uh, any go on and questions present. yeah uh, just a second yes is there any question regarding ryan's project today i present you before you uh, my most innovative idea touch detectors can i Okay, there you go. Hello, my honorable teacher. I am Hadi Dear, and I present you touch detectors. Now, uh, here are the some uh, what we are gonna look today. So, uh, first of all, why I choose this idea out of everything in the whole branch of science, and uh, how I got this idea, how I thought of it, how I uh, created this idea, and next we will see what uh, are the components and what we need, and so. And uh, we also look at how, where it should be placed, and uh, we are going to look at uh, some of your questions, you know, little Q and A, and we are also going to look at pros and cons of the detectors. All right. First of all, why did I choose this idea? Well, since I was seven to eight years old, I, I don't know, I, I don't know the exact date and all, but you know, uh, when I was a little child, actually my mom's cousin or mom's sister's husband actually brought me a cricket bat cricket bat and the ball and I, I was very confused like what is this thing then slowly by time it becomes it became one of my most favorite sport in the whole like my life but seeing one of my most favorite sports people suffer made me think of this idea. I empathized in that stage. And not only I'm a fan of cricket. Recently, I became a fan of science too. So I thought, what if we combine a little bit of science little, with a little bit of cricket and a little bit of technology? What are we going to create? And that's where this idea comes into the play or into my mind. And uh, if I even create this idea, I'll just give it for free. Maybe, I mean, you know, look at, looking at this mind, I will give it for free because I don't want like the business when it uh, comes to more of my sport or my mind. I'm a very honest guy, if you can tell me, or a very kind guy. But this is not for business, but to help what is called my sport items. So this is the umpire story. So consider you... So, um, to consider yourself as an umpire, you are an umpire in a match between A and B. But A is batting while B is bowling. And Mr. A hits the ball and almost hit a whooping four. It was almost gonna cross the boundary, but Mr. B from team B stopped the ball from reaching the boundary and throw it to the wicket keeper as fast as he can. And guess what? Mr. A was still running to the stumps. But with just a blink of an eye, there was a shout for run out wicket by Mr. B. And it's up to you to make a decision. If you make a mistake with the decision company, A can sue you for lakhs of rupees or crores of rupees. There are any money they can take. So there should be a solution, right? Well, yes. And that's where my innovative idea on touch detectors come into clutch. Well, uh, you may ask if you're not a fan of cricket, you may ask, oh, what is run out wicket? Well, uh, if you, you while, like, I, I, I just say the story, if you hit, uh, like, uh, you know, if ball or, or, I don't know how to really explain this because, you know, so actually, like I just like you, just like in the photo itself, if if you just if you just you know the way they say you hit a four, almost hit a four before one of the bowlers or one of the catchers just catch the ball, no, not caught the ball because uh, caught the ball after hitting the ground uh, and just uh, and just threw it back to the wicket keeper. And if you didn't reach the pop increase, which is the line after the stump, it will just, uh, if we just uh, hit the ball, hits the stumps before you reach in a pop increase, it will be a run out wicket. And uh, how I made it? Well, 
through a wonderful process known as design thinking. And there are five steps uh, in design thinking. I'm not going to go through it, but I'm just going to name it. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. Next, components. What, are the, what, what will we need? What are we going to need uh, to create this awesome idea? Motion sensor, sound sensor, electric circuit, copper or steel wires, battery or an electrical cell. How it will work? So first, we place some motion sensors, especially on the pop increase. More about that later. We place it so that it can detect the motion of our legs, and then we will place the sound sensors to make a beat sound and connect it with some type of an underground electrical circuit and cover the sensors with a beautiful metal plate. Well, where should be placed? Just like I said earlier, it's, uh, the best spot for test detector to be placed will be a pop increase or even some return crease or ball increase. It can be anything as forms. Pros of touch detectors. What are the advantages of touch detectors? It will be very helpful to make decisions in situations like this. It will be more efficient than the third empire. Because third empire can maybe uh, fail, like, fail in these decisions. Because again, our tech is just as smart as us, right? So um, this could be more efficient than the third empire. And this uh, this is mainly automatic. It will be help, helpful uh, for more empires and more sports people. And it's easy to construct. Components are very easy and will not be that expensive. But the con says it could be very expensive, mainly for electrical bills. Because the uh, circuit running can cause very expensive electrical bills. And it can be also very loud, especially the beep sound. But does it exist? Well, actually, no. It is still in WAP, also stands for work in progress. But I'm pretty sure that the future will give us more items like this, by items like flying cars or um, just like you guys' ideas. You know, uh, it will give us more items like this with a good welcoming hand. With a good welcoming hand. I mean, now this better. The presentation. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for your patience. And any questions? Any questions? Q and A. Any questions? No. Thank you so much, Mahadev, for your wonderful idea and presenting it to in uh, it in front Hello. of us. Yes. Uh, I think somebody has a question. I think it's I. I think it's I. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, yes, I tell you. Um, um, I, I want to ask a question. Yes. Uh, what are the sensors? The sensor. Hello. Uh, I actually, your voice is breaking a lot, so we were not able. You to type it in the chat. I prefer you Please. type it in the chat. Yes, please type it in the chat and Mahadev can answer it later. So let's move on. Thank you so much, Mahadev. Next, I will be going okay. with um, Anand Krishnan. So um, just a second, um, I'll go with Anand Krishnan. Okay, Anand Krishnan. Hi, everyone. My name is Anand Krishnan. And today I am here to discuss about my innovative idea on the topic smartphone with temperature sensor. Hello, ma'am. Uh, yes, Anand Krishnan, your screen is still... Yeah, now it's visible. You can go on. Okay. Yeah, please put it in the slideshow and you can go on. Many phones are available in the market, but there is no or only few phones which are heat proof. Heat proof. So, my idea can be good, good if it's practical it can say, can be a solution to many big impacts caused on our phones like data loss, battery leakage, discomfort. It can be discomfort to the user 
and it can affect our body biologically. Process of my birth. The temperature sensors are devices to measure temperature through electrical signals. The sensor is made up of three metals, platinum, nickel, or copper. And once it's and once it notices a change in the temperature, it sends signals to the buzzer with the help of a transducer. Let's get into the advantages and difficulties of my idea. Big impacts caused due to heat on our phone. Repeat exposure to heat could permanently slow down. Can cause battery leakage. Discomfort to the user can affect body biologically. It can be a solution to all these ideas. The only difficulty is more battery charge may be needed. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you so much, Anand Krishnan, for your presentation. Uh, next, we will move on with Savio. So, Savio, you can start. Good afternoon to all. My name is Savio John Bibin. I am studying in class 7B in St. Thomas Residential School, Trivandrum. Today's topic is Reality View Display, which is a next generation display technology. The outline of our presentation conduct contains introduction and how it works and how it will be used in the modern world. So my goal is to view 3D screens without the help of glasses. The binocular vision system relies on the fact that our two eyes are spaced about two inches apart. Therefore, each eye sees the world from a slightly different perspective. And the binocular vision system of our brain uses the difference to calculate the distance. Realistic view display is possible with the help of special sensors, real-time rendering algorithm, micro-optical lens. Special sensors are high-speed vision sensor which follows exact eye position in space or on vertical, horizontal, and depth axis simultaneously. This allows creators to interact with their designs in a highly realistic virtual 3D environment from any angle without glasses. Real-time rendering algorithm helps to display content in real time. This allows the stereoscopic image to appear as smooth as real life, even if the viewer moves around. Basic information in the user's eyes will show that how the 3D display is formed. It is generated with 3D CG data. Micro optical lens. This lens divides the image into left and right eyes allowing for stereoscopic view with just the naked eye. Moving on to the advantages. It can be useful in online classes to get a better view uh, and the same in online meetings. In the medical operations, it can be helped to uh, investigate the organs of people of diseases. And this uh, industrial design can be used for industries which and next is video games, which is also related. Sorry, related to this and tourism and sightseeing. Tourism and sightseeing can be helped with this. Thank you, Mahima teacher, for the encouragement and support. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Savio, for uh, your amazing and wonderful presentation today. So with this, we have come to the end of our presentation uh, today. And uh, I would really like to thank all of you to give your uh, precious time to us and uh, to give all the appreciation to our students. 
and i would also like to congratulate all of our 10 champs to um, come who have come forward and presented their awesome and amazing ideas with us so with this i would like to conclude today's project presentation thank you very much and stay safe